All right. Our next question is from Sydney R. Green. Have you ever trained someone with body dysmorphia? How do you help people overcome it? A lot of people, actually. Yeah. Right. I, I've worked with a few people where it was uh, they, they were being treated uh, for body dysmorphia. In fact, they got mm. sent to me by their therapist uh, to train them uh, because I was a, uh, the therapist was my client. So they knew that you know, I would be able to help them, I guess, because of their experience with me, I had to help them develop a better relationship with exercise. One of the more effective things that I did with – people with varying degrees of body and I say varying degrees because it's super common for some sort of body dysmorphia when you're in the gym working out and especially among my peers it's very common among personal trainers and fitness professionals don't to, you to think we, with don't you think we all have a little bit of this I do I I, I, do. I think it's more of a spectrum like I really feel like yeah yes, I would agree with that I really feel like almost every because let's be honest right like of all the you know hundreds and probably co collectively thousands of people that we've trained, how many times has somebody came in and they're just like, hey, Adam, I, I want to train because I need to exercise and I want to be healthier. It's like, that's such a small percentage. Most mm -hmm. people are driven in there because of the way they look. Yeah, because and they, that's the main motivation. Because they yeah. hate the way they look. Well, that's what I'm yeah. saying, yeah. right? And, and, and admittedly, they come mm -hmm. in, I hate this tire around my, I just can't stand my flabby. And they're like, they literally will use that, that verbiage. So I think that... This is more now. There's, uh, it's so extreme with some people, right? That's why I said it's a spectrum that they're having a medical uh, condition and they're yeah. being treated for it. But I actually would argue that more there's a probably a higher percentage of people in the gym right now working out that actually suffer from some sort of body dysmorphia. I would, I would agree. I mean, we're we're constantly being, um, or or it's reinforced to us that the way our body yeah. looks, we're being marketed to. Is, that way. It's very important. It's yeah. like one of the most important things. You know, wisdom isn't that important. Intelligence isn't that important. It's like how we look. Um, it, that's very important. So we're constantly comparing ourselves to an ideal, and so it's it's quite common. One of the more effective strategies I would do as a trainer, well, first of all, I never directly treated body dysmorphia. I know when to stay in my lane, and, and I always, especially if it was a bad case, would always work with the therapist. That was the person who focused directly on that. My goal as a trainer was to get the person to love exercise because it made them feel good, love exercise because they like the strength gains, they like the performance, um, they like the movement themselves. They enjoyed the workouts. I my goal was always to move them away from the you know falling in love with the visible changes from exercise. Like oh, am I getting leaner? Am I do I look any different? It was more like wow, I'm, I added five pounds to the bar, or I could do a full squat today. And so they really loved the performance, and it just took their focus off of the body long enough or or with enough uh, effectiveness to get them to really enjoy working out for some of its other qualities. Because when you're dealing with this uh, situation, it's very easy. Like, here's the deal. If you have body dysmorphia challenges and you go into working out with the wrong motivations, it'll make it worse. Mm. I've seen this many times. Oh, you can yeah. become very obsessed. Um, when you look at people who deal with uh, anorexia or bulimia, oftentimes what's what's uh, you know combined with that is over exercising. Yeah. Um, so if you go into it the right motivation, like if you go into your workout thinking, you know, if let's say this is you, you acknowledge that you have body dysmorphia issues. Maybe you're seeing a therapist. So now you're going to the gym, and rather than thinking I need to burn off calories, I need to change the way I look, you think you know what, I, I haven't been kind to myself, so I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going to take care of myself. I, I need to feel better. I like to, I want to move better. I want to feel um, stronger. I want to see how strong I can get. Like that's a good one because it's hard, it's really hard to get stronger if you're not feeding yourself enough. Now on the mm. flip side, if you're dealing with a man with body dysmorphia, sometimes you get what they call bigorexia, which is the opposite where the guy just wants to get bigger doesn't care about uh, you know his health, uh, oftentimes takes anabolic steroids or eats too much food, I would have fell more closer into this category, in which case I would focus on performance as well, but it wouldn't be strength. It would be mobility, yeah. mobility and flexibility. Because if you push strength with those guys, they can also go to I, I love to focus on like a and, – and here's the thing. So I under, if this is a trainer – I don't know if this is a trainer asking this question. So I totally understand this challenge because I remember how challenging this was Early in, because this dealt with this a ton. I remember how hard it was in the beginning versus how hard it, or how much easier it became later for me. Later on, when I built the confidence and experience as a trainer, I could tell a client like this, like, 
okay, like, you know, regardless if they sat down from me and said, oh, I hate the way I look, I don't want this or this, and I would be able to say, listen, do you, you were referred by somebody to me like that, do you trust that I'm going to take good care of you? And I would get them to commit that they trust me, and they say, well, so this is what we're going to do, like, I, I'm not going to have you get on the scale. We're not going to do these measurements. It's not what I want to do is I'm going to teach you something and I just need you to trust me that I'm going to take care of the goals, the things that you want, but I want you to follow what I, what I show you. Okay. And, the, and get that buy-in first. And then the program would be focused around either strength or skills. Like I love to take yeah, someone yeah. and teach them like a Turkish get up, a tur- teaching a I great, was, yeah, a, tr- a great Turkish get up could take months and months and months of training and focus and it's it's fun to try and get somebody good at it. And what a feeling of accomplishment! Yeah, and it, and exactly. And then when you when they you watch somebody who can barely balance ten pounds over their head and do a cur- Turkish get up, all of a sudden be able to do that with a forty pound kettlebell or weight over their head and do it with beautiful form. And the whole focus was around that. As a byproduct, they will get stronger. They'll feel better. You know, and and then you can attach and you can show them like how they are making progress with their goals and disconnect yeah. it from the way they look. I'm so glad you brought that up. Uh, that's like falls right into what I was going to say. It's like, you know, I get somebody like that. They're very uh, physically motivated to change because they hate themselves. Like they're coming in with that type of energy. My favorite thing to do is to introduce them to unconventional tools and unconventional ways of training that sort of just flips the script. So, you know, in order to reframe how they think, think like this is all going to go in terms of their workouts and what, you know, muscle size and, or, you know, how much of this body fat we're going to lose or this or that. Like they're just focused on the actual thing that's right in front of them, learning like something like a mace bell and like how to swing it properly, like by just doing these things that actually do stimulate the muscle and it does promote, uh, you know, fitness that we can build upon. Uh, I just found that like a, a much better way to at least start, you know, having them think differently about how this is all going to go. I yeah. thought it was interesting when I read about strong men like that took on apprentices. I think I brought this up before on the show one time and I can't remember where I read this, but I guess that, that this was like, uh, like the standard before, like, let's say Justin is a strong man and I want to work underneath and I want to learn from him. And he's this great trainer and he goes, all right, well, you have to first be able to do a Turkish get up with a hundred pounds. And so I would have to acquire that skill. So think of that as a trainer who's getting somebody who's so focused on their body and say like, okay, don't worry, we're going to get to all those things. But the fir- the foundation is we first have got to achieve whatever. And you give them like a strength goal or mm-hmm. a skill goal that you want to focus on. And then don't worry, we're going to do all those things. And it's great because it kind of distracts them from you know their body and changing. But what you know as a trainer that they're, that's all going to come as as they're focusing on that, yeah. but you're taking their mind off of the way they look. Yeah, well, body obsession, um, you know, exercise is a great way to either make body obsession better or worse. Mm-hmm. It really is. It all depends on how you enter into it. If you're working out because you hate yourself, you hate your body, you hate the way you look, it's going to make your body image and body obsession much worse. If you go into it with the mindset that you really want to care for yourself, number one, because you deserve to be cared for. Um, You are a human being and you deserve to be cared for. And number two, because you acknowledge that maybe you weren't doing that before, but now is the time. So now I'm empathetic. Okay. I I, I didn't do it before. This time I'm going to do it. And if you enter into exercise that way, then it makes things so much better. But it is a very powerful tool and it's all in how you use it and it can definitely push you in one way or the other. It all starts with your intention going into it. 